Hi, I'm Cy Wakeman. I'm the author of No Ego, and I'm here in Las Vegas at the SHRM 2019 Conference and Expo. Every year, I look forward to coming to SHRM. This year, I'm doing two mega sessions, two different days, talking about change and no ego and drama, one of my favorite topics. And it is so exciting to see so many followers, people that have been following me for years, but also to meet those newbies. There are actually people who haven't heard about No Ego and how you can ditch the drama at work, and I am meeting hundreds of them. Speaking on Monday and Tuesday? Uh-huh, two days, two different two days. ones. Okay, two So days. one is um, about um, a new version of change management. You'll love it. That, yep. It's blowing up the kind of old version. Yeah, yeah. And the other one is like um, the five sources of drama and just really quick ways to like yep. change HR to make it better. Awesome. Welcoming Cy Wakeman. Awesome. We're going to talk about business readiness today. It's a, it's a term you might not yet have heard of. It's a term that we started to um, actually create and incorporate. It's a medical term that we brought over to describe how we believe we should be leading change going forward. The technical definition is unproductive thinking and disruptive behavior. Do you have any? in your workplace. Now drama is emotional waste. How do you get rid of waste in the workplace? With better processes. How do you get rid of emotional waste? With better mental processes. When I came in to leadership from my past role as a therapist, I realized that much of what we're preaching in HR and leadership is actually poor mental processes dysfunctional, codependent, poor ways of thinking, dependency which breeds contempt, engagement without accountability breeds entitlement that many of the ways that we were trying to update the workplace wouldn't modernize the workplace. If drama is emotional waste, then a leader's role, if they're a modern leader, is completely changed. A leader's role is not to inspire or motivate. A leader's role is to eliminate emotional waste with good mental processes. To have us use better methodology, better ways of thinking in the modern workplace. And it's a leader's role to facilitate that thinking. And sometimes people are like, I'm sorry to bother you, and say, so have you reflected on whether or not this is something that should be brought to my level? I, sometimes when people go, I'm sorry to bother you, I go, I would trust that. Trust to be sorry to bother me, this isn't appropriate. Just tell them. Love it. You bet. We even test child development. We let them attach to the water bottle and they go, or the clicker. They go, oh. <laughs> The leadership techniques we teach people to use, like feedback, punch the ego in the face. They grab the clicker. <laughs> Have you noticed? Have you ever felt like you're in a feedback session with a two-year-old? I did not. Who told you that? I want names. This stuff I do only because I want to live peacefully as a leader is I don't even, I don't go near that ego. I bypass it. Do you want the water bottle? What would great look like if you were great right now? They can't vent and self-reflect at the same time. It's higher conscious effortless leadership. This is important stuff because if you understand how people's brains work, you'll understand how often we are not operating in accordance to the evidence of what we know about human behavior. Asking questions for self-reflection is the main role of a leader. Our current change management approach coddles people. Evolution doesn't favor the species that was protected. Evolution favors the species that was exposed to reality and supported while they were resilient and adapted. And what we've done a lot in change management is not insist on the resilience or the adaptation of our people and therefore our evolution and our growth is stunted and our competitive advantage is being lost in many of our companies. Instead of ensuring people were ready for what's next, that their potential was unlimited, we were doing a lot of trying to bend reality, slow things down, roll it out slowly, keep people aware, make them informed. We were doing all this heavy lifting to coddle and enable. 
So I started to think about what the history of change management is because when people come to me and they say that they're in pain, as a therapist, I know that there's probably three reasons for you to be in pain unless it was a life-altering event. I'm talking about death, cancer diagnosis, but if you come to me and you go, I'm in pain, my job's undoable, we're going to check three places. Your suffering is usually optional and self-imposed. So what's causing your suffering? You can't, you're not able to do your job. Your job has moved on and you are struggling. Let's check three places. One, are you trying to use an outdated skill set on a new requirement? Two, have you modernized your approach recently? Three, what's your level of willingness? What people don't realize when they're in pain is it has to do usually about their own skill set, their own approach, and their own level of willingness. One of the things people are surprised by about me is that I am in person willing to meet and greet you, whether it's before one of my talks or at my book signings. I want to hear from you. I want to know you. I want to know what are some of the challenges you're having. And I also want to hear your questions and I want to hear your success stories. So please make sure that you are subscribed on all my channels and then do your friends a favor. Make sure you have shared every one of my channels so that they're connected as well.